Keep it going for Catherine and Mike, everyone. Hell yeah. Are you guys having fun so far? Yeah. Excellent. Hi. So my name is Sasha. Uh, it's the best of the Midwest, y'all. I got my new flannel on. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I look like I named my tractor Eleanor Roosevelt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I read a fun news article recently. The news article was uh, about companies having trouble finding workers. And apparently companies are now removing the requirement for drug testing and hiring because they don't have enough workers. Yeah. So I want to congratulate drugs on winning the war on drugs. Yeah, yeah, we did it, fuck yeah. I'm a fan, my main vice is alcohol. Um, that's my drug of choice. I'm a Russian who lives in Wisconsin. I have two drinking problems, <laughs> you know, yeah. Being a Russian, you know, I'm sorry about Putin. You know, sorry about that shit. <laughs> Hashtag not my president. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> I mean, he's not. I'm an American citizen. But honestly, like, Russia, a fucked up place. You know, it's kind of like if the CIA were an entire country that's also a distillery in New Jersey, you know? <laughs> Very fucked up. But uh, I, I think you guys can probably tell by my haircut that I am a cat person. <laughs> You are what you eat. <laughs> <laughs> now some of you are wondering, does she mean she eats cats? <laughs> Cat people? <laughs> or just pussy? <laughs> <laughs> I see this too, it's like Velma and Shaggy made a lesbian. <laughs> However, I have a surprise for you all. Here's my little surprise. Uh, I uh, like penis. <laughs> wow, we got some heterosexuality enthusiasts right up front. That's not very Madison of you, but I love you anyways. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, living in Madison, I feel like every time I meet a new person, the first thing out of their mouth is like their pronouns and like, what's your gender? What are your pronouns? And I'm like, I don't know, man. My parents never threw me a gender reveal party, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a medical mystery. But <laughs> I feel like some people assume that only liberals care about pronouns. I think that's true in terms of just them caring about it, but I think conservatives also really, really care about pronouns. It's just that liberals will put their pronouns at the end of an email signature, but conservatives will put their pronouns on the hand towels in their bathroom. <laughs> some of you know those folks. Yeah, the his and hers. I know. I, uh, <laughs> I know some of the hand towel folks, they get kind of upset when somebody refers to their partner as their partner. They're like, what does that mean? What does that mean they got going on? What's their partner? And I'm like, bro, all that means is they got somebody at home wearing a little cowboy hat. <laughs> That's their partner. <laughs> you know? It's okay to rename things every now and then. I'm cool with that. I just recently started calling doggy style the canine method. <laughs> Hell yeah. I will say on the topic of uh, seeming very gay, look, I have a mirror. I knew God had a plan, all right? <laughs> He's like, you're gonna munch rugs. And I was like, nah, I'm gonna suck dick, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but I, uh, I did try it, I did try it. I'm gay enough to have tried pussy many times. <laughs> Just not gay enough to like it, you know? And there was a girl who I hooked up with one time and she asked me to role play Batman during sex. So I hired a guy to kill my parents. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. But no. One of the reasons I may have tried uh, pussy, I'll tell you a little story. So I, I'm actually on my second husband. <laughs> ah, yeah, I got a four husband plan. That's how straight I am. Right now. <laughs> I actually proposed to my husband on this stage. That's a true story. That's, thank you. It's a little cringe though. It's a little cringe. <laughs> I will admit, it's kind of hallmark. Um, I feel like, honestly, it's kind of the ultimate comedian destroys heckler moment, you know? So if anybody heckles me tonight, um, I'll fucking marry you. <laughs> Not to threaten you with a bad time, but yeah. Um, but uh, my first husband, uh, we got into what we'll call uh, a kerfuffle one time. Got into a little kerfuffle, a little imbroglio. And the neighbors overheard the ruckus 
And then they called the police and they texted us being like, hey, the police are on their way. And my ex-husband being the classy guy that he was, bolted. So then I had to deal with the cops. But I'm no snitch, all right? So when the cops showed up at my door and they were like, hey, what's the problem with your husband? I said, beats me. <laughs> Thanks for laughing at that one. Hope you got a kick out of it. <laughs> I did, Ooh. yeah. No, 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 it's fine. We got out of that. I know that's very dark, but hey, we've moved on. It's fine, it's fine. And uh, I, my husband's a wonderful man. You know, he kind of looks like a Game of Thrones character. He's like 6'3", red hair, jaw out to here. Looks like he could fuck a truck, you know? <laughs> Some men get into a vehicle, they make it go. My husband gets into a vehicle, he makes it come, all right? <laughs> I'm the truck, uh, beep, beep, hello. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just the autism speaking, but yeah. <laughs> You all can see this, right? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't start smoking weed until I was 25 because I was too busy playing Magic the Gathering, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Up until then, you know, I'm just playing a lot of Magic. Then I started smoking weed, and people will tell you, when you start smoking a lot of weed, they're like, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do that. It's detrimental to your life. You know, you're going to start spending a lot of money, and you're going to start hanging out with a bunch of losers, you're going to smell weird. And I'm like, dude, I already play Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Don't play games. It's exactly the same. You know, I'm trading one vice for another. But yeah, actually the first time I smoked weed, I got really, really paranoid. I got way too high, I got paranoid, and I heard this wailing noise outside my apartment, and I freaked out. I was like, oh my God, I smoked one marijuana, and the cops are here, my life is over, I'm gonna get arrested, everything is fucked. But then I decided to peek through the blinds, see where this wailing noise was coming from. Turns out, <laughs> this is a true story, it was just a mentally handicapped man running around outside screaming with his shirt off. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Oof, he's off duty. <laughs> All right, we split the audience a little bit on that one, but it's fine. We'll do a palate cleanser. Let's learn something about you guys. Um, so who here, by way of sad woos, has heard their parents have sex? Oh, my God. <laughs> that was a... Uh, me too, me too. Uh, I've also heard your parents have sex. <laughs> <laughs> no. Growing up, I uh, heard my parents dance with the devil, which means I know what it sounds like when my dad comes. <laughs> yeah, not information I wanted in my brain, but that's not even the worst part, you guys. The worst part is it's the same sound he makes in a bunch of other situations. <laughs> <laughs> Just like using the bathroom, eating spicy food getting up out of a chair, and realized that my dad was a grunter. That or he was just coming all the time. <laughs> horny, horny man. Uh, but uh, on the topic of my mom, she's a lovely human being, very sweet, loving parent. Uh, but I feel like she does this, this classic mom thing where she forgets how old I am and she checks up on me about very basic stuff. Here's an example. Every single winter, I get a text message from my mom and she's like, hey, I hope you're wearing a coat because it's cold outside. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm in my 30s. <laughs> I know about coats. You know, We're Russians who live in Wisconsin. I've heard of coats. But I know that she reaches out because she cares. She wants to feel needed. So for my mom's sake, on a random day in January, I sent her a text message. And I'm like, mom, I'm naked outside and it's cold. What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> and she's like, oh, yeah, it's my time to shine. You got to put on a coat, you frosted ass bitch. <laughs> Yeah, we have fun, we have fun. I know. When I, when I first met my husband, I wasn't really used to what he was uh, serving because I have a very masculine energy and uh, all of the guys I've attracted until him are these like very twinky, you know, like elfin, effeminate men. They're kind of like the fuck me in the ass types of guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? Like I attract three types of men. Here's category number one. Category number one is uh, math and science majors who play video games. Okay, talk to me after the show. <laughs> Category number two, black guys who like Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. And category number three, men who want me to fuck them in the ass. <laughs> yeah, and your vibe attracts your tribe. My strap-on's name is Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> I do think it's funny that God put men's G-spots up their asses, you know? It's like, ooh, here's a little something-something to make you feel good when there's stuff up your butt. No homo. 
But for that reason, I don't think I have penis envy, despite Jeff, but I definitely have prostate envy, right? Because you potentially get to have like a little sexual tingle while you're taking a shit. <laughs> Folks, I eat Chipotle. Uh, I take a lot of fat ass dumps, all right? That sounds amazing. So when guys ask me, why is my G-spot up my asshole? I just say, for shits and giggles, dude. <laughs> I did hook up with the guy, uh, you know, he's one of these fuck me in the ass guys, and he shows me his butthole, which like, that's normal for me, I have cats, you know. It's like, <laughs> that's just a Tuesday. <laughs> he shows me his butthole, and he's like, do you think I should bleach my asshole? And I was like, all right, first of all, dude, let's not call it bleaching your asshole, that's rectal gentrification. <laughs> not to get political about rectal sex, but anyways. Uh, but so this is the type of guy I'm used to, and then I meet my husband, and he's this Game of Thrones king, and he's like very strong, silent type. And uh, when we first started hooking up, he's just like very quiet during sex. It's, it's this great sex, but he's not making a peep. So one time I'm on top, and he starts getting soft. And I was like, hey, er is everything cool? Did I do something wrong? And he was like, oh, I came like a while ago. <laughs> and I was like, okay, awesome. That means I did my part. I got mine, you got yours, great. Um, but here's a little request from yours truly next time we do this. If you can just give me a little communication, a little heads up, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> and he said, okay. <laughs> so next time we're getting into it, again, it's this fantastic sex, but he is silent as a mouse until finally he just went, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, he's the opposite of my dad, you guys. <laughs> I gotta marry him, you know? That's great. I have gotten in trouble because of dirty talk stuff in the past. I, uh, when I was in between husbands, I uh, found a guy who had an Alexa in his house. And we were getting down to business, you know, uh, to defeat the Huns. <laughs> All right, they're my Mulan fans, hell yeah. <laughs> now we were, we were, we were fucking, we were fucking. And while we're fucking, this guy goes, call me daddy. And Alexa goes, now calling your father. <laughs> <laughs> One way to meet your boyfriend's parents, I guess. Yeah, that's interesting. It's interesting. I don't know. Do you guys want to do a gross one? Shall we do kind of a, a grody one? I'm sensing a lot of enthusiasm in the front row, and the back is just like, ugh. <laughs> All right. But uh, let's, let's try it. Let's try it. So, um, one of my first experiences with women, again, I'm between husbands, I'm like, maybe I'm gay. <laughs> and uh, I find a woman in a bar, I have a Wolverine haircut, I'm like bisexual kryptonite, I'm like pulling pretty hard. <laughs> She's pretty fucking hot, you guys. We get back to her place, we're making out, it's getting hot, and I start uh, making my way downtown. <laughs> now nipples pass, moving fast, and I'm crotch bound. <laughs> 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 Well, I actually didn't quite get to the no, 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 no. Because uh, at this juncture, this girl knows something that I don't know. She knows that she's on her period. Yeah, gross. I told you it was a gross one. But I don't know this, right? And she, she kind of stops me. She's like, okay, so. <coughs> and uh, I think maybe that she's potentially feeling self-conscious. Maybe it's also her first time with a woman. So I try to reassure her. I was like, hey, you're hot. I'm having a good time. If you're having a good time, let's just go for it. And she's like, okay, go for it. <laughs> so I went for it, and boy, did I have egg on my face. Hey. All right, folks, that's what we in the Jewish community refer to as pulling a Moses. <laughs> Spreading the Red Sea for my non-Bible folks, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you like the, you know, the History Channel, it's the Bolshevik Revolution. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's fun. I, uh, I'll tell you a couple more and then get out of here. This has been a very fun show. Thank you all so much for coming out tonight. Give it up for yourselves. This has been amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, so I, I've, you know, gotten with this second husband, and I, I think this is the final husband. I had a four-husband plan, but I think this is the final one. And my parents are getting very antsy for me to have kids. But honestly, I feel like I'm kind of happy having nephews. I have these uh, three half-nephews. One and a half nephews for my math nerds. <laughs> and, uh, nephews are great. Uh, my sister, she raised her sons in San Francisco and she wanted to make sure they knew how to identify when people are high and what they're high on, because San Francisco is wild, right? <laughs> so I'm visiting the nephews one weekend. They're outside playing handball and this lady comes by and she's like, hey, 
looks like you boys are having fun. And all at the same time, my nephews were like, that's ketamine. <laughs> and they were right. <laughs> I was on ketamine. <laughs> All right, folks, you've been amazing. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night.